Hello my soccer universe. Well, the Champions League is back and despite me enjoying most of the Europa League action over the past uh, two days, I have to say the Champions League action was again better. We know now why the Champions League. I mean, every year is the same thing. Uh, but I like it actually better. First is Europa League and then it's the Champions League because it's a build-up and not a drop-off as we usually would have it. Um, two matches yesterday. Let's start at Manchester City against Real Madrid, which was actually the match that I looked uh, forward to, which was kind of intriguing uh, from the get-go because um, Real Madrid played really well uh, to finish out the league. Manchester City is so-and-so, so you saw the vulnerabilities. There were just two things that... I mean, two big absences, Sergio Aguero for Manchester City, which I felt, yes, he's a reliable goal, goal scorer. And yeah, he's probably the second best player of City. I mean, I think De Bruyne is the better one. Um, but for Real Madrid, the suspension of Sergio Ramos seemed to me a little bit uh, weighing heavier for the simple reason that I think it's... He's not the greatest defender, but he is this inspirational character that can pull a team along. And actually, that's exactly what we saw that uh, was a little bit missing from um, Real Madrid throughout the entire uh, game. So uh, at every moment where I thought, oh, Real Madrid might actually do it. No. Uh, you know, they also never rarely score two goals. They need to score two, two goals. Uh, they need to open up a little bit. Mazuma is great, but it needed a showing from Azar, and that actually never really came. But what really killed Real Madrid was Rafael Varane, who seemed completely lost without Sergio Ramos, because now he was uh, kind of the center of attention, and that did not go well. Rafael Varane already in the ninth minute, uh, he takes a ball from uh, Kul Courtois, wants to play it back to him, and Sterling, um, Gabriel Jesus takes the ball off him, plays it to Sterling, who just needs to put it in the empty net. Hor horrific start, and it took Real Madrid like uh, a time to get back into. There was a shot from Azar, but I think it was his only contribution. It was mostly about Benzema. And can I quickly uh, say, George, jersey matchup? This was the first time I saw the pink jersey of Real Madrid. Playing the old jerseys, you could have played in the navy blue ones. This would have looked uh, gorgeously. Uh, it looked a little bit like a baby shower, the whole thing. Light blue against the pink. I mean, it was not, from a color point of view, not a bad matchup, but still looked a little bit weird. Anyway, Real Madrid got better into the, into the game the longer the game went on and got actually an equalizer where the entire city defense forgot about Karim Benzema. I mean, he uh, puts the ball out out to Rodrigo, then runs in the box. There are three defenders around him. No one is aware that there is Karim Benzema. He just takes the header and it's 1-1. And at this point, game on. We really had an exciting game uh, because now Real Madrid was only a goal away from uh, overtime. And they really, uh, towards the end of the first half, really pushed forward to get actually that goal. However, to start out the second half, I think Guardiola, who for once I think was not overthinking the game plan. I mean, City was not great uh, and they were rather sloppy on the front. I also have, has a special at the beginning of the second half, where they really uh, could have used the defensive frailties to score uh, more goals. But it really took another big uh, mistake by Varane, who first misjudges the ball, bounces in front of him, then he heads it timidly towards Kurt Courtois. And who is there? Gabriel Jesus pressing, getting into it, and just with one simple touch gets it past. Um, Kul Courtois makes it 2-1 for Manchester City, 4-2 on aggregate, and that was the game. Yes, Real Madrid would have only needed two goals, but who should it come from? I mean, um, Benzema alone cannot do it, and I think after the 75th, everyone knew how this game is going. And it needs to be said, it's the first time that Zinedine Zidane gets eliminated from the Champions League as a coach. That is huge, I have to say. So, uh, congratulations, Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. And then who would they play? Um, either Juve or Lyon. Um, Juve needed to make up a 1-0 deficit from the first leg. And they tried, but, you know, 
I always thought that you was the stronger side than Lyon overall, but I did not I did not have much confidence. And from the Italian showings from the Europa League, I didn't expect much either. And Juve has not been all, all the great. Maybe in that uh, scenario, Lyon had a little bit the upper hand from a really good showing. I, by the way, I do not like the new Lyon jerseys, especially this away jersey. Uh, none of the club calls in that. This is the black and dark gray. Nah, didn't look all that well. Um, the first half was really um, characterized by two rather dubious penalties. The first one, once you see the, re I mean, if you see the initial replay, you wonder why is there a foul? There was no foul, but there was Bernadeschi tripped up um, the attacker before. So for that reason, okay, maybe you can give this as a penalty. I still thought this was rather soft penalty over, and I think the referee. Um, gave the initial foul from, from Bentancur, or the supposed foul, where there was no foul, and then VAR actually found the trip, oh yeah, maybe this should be a penalty, and left it there. Depay, Panenka kick, uh, makes it 1-0 for Lyon, and that was huge, because at the moment, at that moment, you would have needed three goals, and it was always going to be an uphill battle. Um, they had chances, though, and I think the biggest one came from Bernadeschi, who went from the outside towards the touchline, um, goes past the key keeper towards the touchline so on the inside and is basically 30 centimeters away from uh the goal but the defender slaps it away from just when he wanted to pull it in this would have been an amazing goal i have to say um there was a free kick by ronaldo that was nicely saved and then uh Pjanic shortly after gets a free kick and it hits memphis Depay on the hand although his hand is kind of like this that was even worse penalty. Ronaldo steps up and uh, puts it in. Second half initially saw really Juventus trying to get um, the goal. But, you know, when I say trying, it was never really convincing. Juve just does not look right. Uh, and that for a while, I think, with the arrival of Ronaldo, it didn't work out all the way. And Ronaldo does his part. He scores the goals. But the team is not built to feed him. And now with Sari, I think it gets even worse. Ronaldo gets a wonderful goal in the 60th minute where he just, uh, from way outside, uh, slams the ball into, in, in, into the net. No chance for, for the keeper. Uh, while it might look have savable, I don't think really. So that was a big uh, goal from Ronaldo. Then they actually had a few from which has notably Ronaldo header. But then Leo in the last 10 minutes actually went on the offensive and I thought they might they were more dangerous than you were. You were desperately wanted. I never saw it coming. I never saw it coming that, that they will score a goal and they didn't. And Lyon hangs on and pulls the upset. And now we have Manchester City playing Lyon and not Juventus. Um, and both 2017 finalists are out. I'm not so worried about Real Madrid at the moment. I'm really worried in a way about Juventus. I think they missed their Champions League window. That 2017 final, I think this was their biggest chance of, get, get, of getting it. They got Ronaldo, but they didn't back up on the team. And so I think Juve will have a tough time. It will probably still be enough to finish in the top four easily in Serie A, if not get another championship. But everything else doesn't look all that well. Well, part two of the round of 16 was not all that exciting, although I was hoping for a bit more drama. But before we get to that... Um, there's a little uh, addendum to the Juve crashing out of the Champions League. Sarri got fired and within a few hours they presented Andrea Pirlo as the replacement coach and I'm thinking, wow. Um, Pirlo was the under-23 coach and I think it would have been a great appointment. Now he has to take Juve and for me... Uh, at first, he screams a little bit like panic because there were many good coaches, most notably Allegri, still available. However, um, I think it's all down to money. Pirlo is cheap. Um, Juve still has to pay the salaries now for uh, Sari. Um, they, I think, not with Allegri, they didn't extend the contract or, or, or whatever, but you know, the. Uh, the squad is expensive. Juve went away from their principles, uh, almost like Barcelona, but in a different way, uh, of getting players on the cheap. 
and so uh, they they are lacking money in a way to pay a good coach. Also, um, do you why Pochettino would be uh, I think a one that you would say this uh, would also be a good one, but that would be another major rebuild. And I think you think they don't have the time. We have Cristiano now. I think it's a crapshoot, but let's see how it will end up. Uh, the highest respect for Pirlo as a player. Let's see how it will happen uh, as a coach. Maybe he will do a Zidane. And that's another one. Uh, Zidane has a one-year contract. Maybe you will want to get Zidane. Maybe they want to buy themselves this one year. I have no idea what they're going to do, but uh, it's an intriguing story. Going to yesterday's games, I actually want to start with the Bayern game. Uh, because the big question there was... Uh, is how will Bayern look after the break? Well, I have to say they look pretty darn good. Yes, it's Chelsea. Chelsea with all the defensive problems and so on. But still, uh, the way Bayern is playing... Um, tip of the head. Uh, they were barely... The game started and there was already a penalty given. First, it was not given because of offside. But it was non offside and Lewandowski makes it. Uh, no more chance. Uh, there was one nice counter attacking move by Müller uh, that was uh, put over the bar by Müller. It was over Alaba, uh, Davis, and then Müller. Uh, and then another one, and you you could see how bad Chelsea is defensively that one. Uh, Lewandowski gets the ball on uh, from his view the left side on the box. It has ample of time, and you see Perisic running into the box, always keeping a uh, track of where the offside line is, staying behind that one. And there's no Chelsea player around. I mean, Lewandowski first wants to take on the Chelsea player. Then he looks up. Ah, there's Perisic. And it seems like forever until he gets the ball to Perisic, who just has to put it in, in, inside. It was a ridiculous goal. Um, then seemingly Bayern said, okay. That's done and dusted. We don't need to put that much effort in there. Uh, Hudson Doy actually uh, scores a nice goal, but in the build-up there was an offside. Uh, they get their goal in the 44th uh, through Tammy Abraham, uh, who were Neuer. Let's the ball kind of bounce off himself, and uh, he puts it in. Uh, lots of changes then. Towards the end of the game, Tolisso and Lewandowski uh, make it. Uh, sorry. Uh, Resounding 4-1 win for Bayern and yeah, I think Bayern underline big time. We are among the, uh, the favorites in this comp competition. Yes, this Chelsea side was, is not a measuring stick, but still, I think when I look at what's coming up for them, I think Bayern looks pretty darn good. This is a very well-oiled team at the moment. That leaves us with the opponent for Bayern, which was decided between Barca and Napoli. Uh, and Napoli, from the get-go, had pretty good chances. I mean, th this was the one thing. We know that Napoli has exciting players up front, and Insigne was playing. Uh, maybe midfield is the one thing where I'm not so uh, secure with them. And I have to say, despite nominally having a great defense with Manolas and Koulibaly, that defense in Serie A was not showing all, 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 all that much. So from the beginning, uh, Napoli had big chances and actually hit uh, the, the angle of the uh, woodwork through Dries Mertens, who just m slightly mishits the ball. But that, after one and a half, half minutes, would have set the tone right there. Uh, Napoli continues going forward, but uh, with one counter-attack, kind of, Barcelona gets a corner, corner, corner kick, where uh, Rakitic takes it, and then Langley and Piquet both push uh, Napoli defenders away, so Langley is free, can put it in the net. Uh, Langley, I think, pushed Mertens into Koulibaly, and to be honest, that this goal was given to me is a little bit of an outrage. This is prime. Uh, they checked it, but this is something where the ref really needs to go to the screen and look at that one. This is, to me, maybe poor, poor borderline, but it is something that the ref needs to look at. So it's 1-0 for uh, Bar Barcelona, and then it seemed kind of easy for Bar 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 Barcelona, because Napoli uh, didn't uh, sit back as they did in the first leg, and uh, Messi ran rampant. I mean, uh, he scores a wonderful goal, 
in the 23rd. I mean, where he has the ball again at uh, in the in instead of backs, he loses his footing, is on the ground, gets up again, steadies himself, takes a shot while falling again. You know, he makes the dummy and pulls it in the net. I mean, that's Messi in a, in in a nutshell. Uh, Extraordinary goal. If anyone else scores this in on on this play, we would be talking about the goal. So, since it's messy, it's just another messy goal. Uh, he makes another great goal where he kind of steadies the ball and then with just a few touches puts it in the net. But uh, in the build up, he plays a handball, uh, and at that point, Napoli was clearly hanging in 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 the, in the ropes and Koulibaly not having a particularly great game, which was then. Um, he gave away a penalty where I have, I have to say there is no fault of his. Uh, he, if you watch the replay, he looks at the ball, he wants to yank it out of the box far downfield and Messi gets ahead of him, wants to steal the ball. Um, yeah, awareness. You need to be aware that Messi is there. You need to be, act faster. Uh, I, in a way, I hate that this is a penalty because there was no intention of fouling or getting the ball it's kind of because Messi is sneaking in and then uh, he is brought down a little bit odd I have to say but yeah it is a penalty by the lead of the law and uh, Messi they both had to be treated uh, lengthily because I mean what Koulibaly puts into that uh, attempted shot clearly must have hurt Messi and also himself uh, that's why Suarez then steps up and converts it 3-0 and you think it's done uh, however, Rakitic gives away a penalty. I think he uh, pushes Mertens in in the box and Insigne steps up and just before halftime it's 3-1. And at that point I was only watching because I thought the Bayern game is done, uh, even though the Barca game was not that exciting. But I always had the feeling if Napoli would get another one, uh, but the Barcelona seems shaky. And that's kind of why I decided to wear this Barca shirt now because this is from, from, from a time where Barca was also uh, maybe exciting on the, on the front, but rather shaky on defense and, 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 and so on. So I think this is kind of fitting. Uh, and it's also, I think, the first, the earliest pictures of Messi we have is wearing this jersey, uh, oddly enough. Uh, that was 2001, 2002, 2002, 2003, somewhere there. Uh, they were, no, 2001, 2002, they were wearing this jersey. Uh, and so it was in the second half. I mean, on one side, I never felt that Napoli can get into it, but I also felt that Barcelona is not safe enough to really play it through. And Milik scored a goal that was rightly uh, chalk, chalk of F or of, offset. There was uh, the post hit uh, rather... You know, Ter Stegen is right there, but it looked kind of weird that suddenly uh, the ball goes off the post and Ter Stegen is just calmly standing, standing there. There were, uh, there was a chance where Lozano probably should not have had, had it and should have taken it, uh, led it through. I think Mertens was there again. Uh, you know, all those kind of things. If Napoli was a little bit more clinically up front, the miracle was right there for the taking. I always had the feeling in the end, uh, Barcelona hangs on and... Again, it looked easy, but you always had the feeling that if one goal goes in, this could go in a big tailspin. That was the consistent feeling I had with Barcelona. And so, so we have a very interesting quarterfinal uh, lineup. And now note as how we said before the tournament happened, uh, that uh, the, the first two games there, no one has won it. And on the bottom are all the big boys. With Lyon going through and Manchester City going through, meaning Real and Juve going out, there's only one quarterfinal with previous winners, and that's uh, Barcelona against Bayern. So that's normally the big one. Everything else is kind of, it points that we might get a new Champions League winner, unless, of course, Bayern steamrolls every, every, everyone. But now it's two other, uh, it's one quarter, it's only previous winners. I don't know when we had this the last time. Uh, so we have Atalanta against PSG. To me, this is a really, really, really intriguing game. Uh, although the way Italian teams, the showing of the Italian teams uh, in European competition, I think they are overplayed from the lengthy Serie A uh, season because they really had to play 12 rounds in more even in uh, six weeks. That's 
was clearly too, too, too much. Then Leipzig against, against Atletico, that's probably, probably the one where I don't expect a good game out of. Uh, Leipzig could be in interesting, but Atletico uh, will stifle them. I, yeah, let's see. Barca Bayern uh, is a big name matchup. I expect a clear Bayern vic vic victory, and uh, especially since uh, Jerome Boateng probably who is still reeling from what Messi did to him in 2015. I think there will be some revenge enacted on Barca uh, and Manchester City should have no problem with Lyon, but you know, you uh, should not have had any problems with Lyon. So yeah, uh, I think a City Bayern semi-final would be interesting, but it would not be what I was looking for. I have to say if and that's exactly how it will not go. I would like Atalanta to go, go through. I would like Atleti to go through, mostly because I don't have a Leipzig jersey. I would like Barca to go through. Uh, some part of me would like Lyon to go through. I don't have a Lyon jersey, so that's my way where I would have a uh, city. But yeah, um, I think it will go probably the other way, and we know who are the favorites. I think those among those three teams, we will find the winner of the Champions League. Anyway. Let me know what you thought about the games, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm gonna wish you a wonderful day. Bye!